How's it going everybody? My bench was clean. I don't know what happened. Just trying to get projects finished, sorted. The little odds and ends is working on Hogan saw for a little bit. Uh, unbox some stuff that you guys sent me. Just having a good day. I'm going to run outside and fire up the skid steer soon. I get a lot of emails. So this is emails and comments spring today's topic. I kind of want to drive home my thoughts on these farmer tech saws because I think there seems to be some confusion about these saws okay um, about what they actually are porting them the quality or perceived quality of these saws and again I'm gonna drop one more saw off the shelf here right here okay because this is a 181 but this is a farmer tech 288 they are the same chassis um, this is 88 cc's. This is like 80, 82 cc, somewhere around there. Okay. This is an all OEM saw, piston cylinder. Everything about this saw is OEM. This is an all Farmer Tech saw. Okay. Um, and I, I get, I'm just going to put this back up here so you guys can see me. I get a ton of questions and comments about these saws. Um, I think these saws really. Um, I think there's something that a lot of newcomers are really interested in and uh, and that's good that more people in the hobby is fun if you want to learn how to build a saw get one of these please do if you want to learn how to wrench um, please get one of these but friends don't these are for fun I bought this just because it was something to do I'll probably buy more kits in the future but by no means, friends, is this an OEM saw. This is not a Husqvarna. It is not a Husqvarna quality. It will not last as long as a Husqvarna. I'm going to tell you that right now. And so here's the thing, friends. I get emails almost daily. Um, people wanting me to port these for them or they want to port these. Okay. Um, friends, I don't take a ton of work. Most of the work I'm going to take uh, is for friends and professional cutters, guys that I want to have my saws. I want everybody to have my saws friends, but let's face it, most of these builds, when I start a saw, uh, a saw could sit here for a month or two and when I start it, or longer friends, when I start a saw, it could be a full month or even longer before it's done, running, tested, and out the door. Um, these saws take a long time because I work on the vintage stuff friends, you know, the vintage stuff. You never know what you're gonna come across. You know, I spent, I spent a good part of this morning digging through parts to build Hogan a nice chain break. Whether you guys will see that before or after this. But I want to clear the air about these saws, my actual feelings about them, so that there's no miscommunication. Friends, if you have one of these and you want to port it, have at her. Please do. Um, I can't say that your saw will last or not ported if you port it okay so that's number one these are very questionable quality i could build five of these one can run good uh three can be just so so and one can be an absolute pain in the butt the other one i have friends has had numerous problems the fellow that built it uh he made a few little mistakes but i honestly don't think it was his building skill i just i think these need a little more tender love and care and maybe um you know, somebody with more experience or more experience with saws that are a little finicky. Um, you know, he had a base gasket blow out on his build. Um, the carburetor was loose, little things like that. And those little things add up to a saw that just wasn't going to run. But it is what it is, friends. We all make mistakes. But I want to go over the different components. Okay, friends? Me. I'm porting the other 288 and I'm sending it to Texas. I'm sending it 2,000 miles from me, friends, okay? Or 1,500 miles away to my buddy. He owns that Echo CS590 that just for whatever reason, friends, that saw never made it. It never ran properly. It's still sitting here in a box. Who knows if it'll ever come back out again. I have, I have probably 100 hours into that build and we we threw parts at it for a while and then I had to stop and think. For whatever reason, friends, that saw just doesn't clean up in the cut. I've tried numerous carbs, coils, etc. The timing and porting is not any different than any number of uh, saw builders use. 
Um, I just turned that saw off a little bit, but for whatever reason, uh, it has issues. So he's the owner of that saw. I owe him a saw, friends. He doesn't think I owe him a saw, but in my mind, I owe him a saw. Whether I created the issues on that saw or not is irrelevant. I owe him a saw. He was interested in one of these, so I thought, well, I'll just I'll build him a nice one and send it, and that way we get to know whether certain parts of these saws will last, and he gets to try one out. And he wants a 288, friends. So most 288s are absolutely haggard, and guys want big money for them. So if you're looking for a 288, this may be a good starting point. Stock. If you want to port one, it's kind of questionable, friends. So I want to talk about today what is questionable on these, because there seems to be some misnomers, <coughs> miscommunication. I had a couple guys <coughs> message, oh, I thought you wouldn't port one of those. This saw here, this is my 288, the one that I built. This thing's bone stock, it has a base gasket. The only thing I changed was the oil pump. Friends, it's getting a little funky in here. I'm baking the ceramic coating on the Hogan's pipe right now. Might have to clear out of here soon. Just stinks, it's starting to stink a little bit. Uh, two hours at 400 degrees Fahrenheit is what I baked those for, and then I let them sit overnight to cure. Anyways, getting back to this. These saws, the cases seem really good on them. Um, the plastic's usable, the handle's stiff, the, the AV mounts, all that stuff is good. The handle's nice. So, most of the parts, I like these mufflers. They seem to breathe really well. Uh, the dogs seem to be okay. So, a lot of these parts are useful. The oil and fuel caps do not leak on these, so that used to be a problem. Friends, I don't, it, I, it's not that I dislike these, but if I'm putting my name and my sticker and my time into a saw and it's going to a professional, I want it to last. Again, go back and watch my, I thought my saws were awesome and then I ate humble pie video. That outlines why I won't port one of these friends. My saws typically go to professionals. They are run every day. They have to last, friends. If they don't last, what a waste of time. Um, between, you know, splitting them, cleaning them, new bearings, seals, gaskets, O-rings, rebuilding the carb, tweaking the carb, or changing the carb, porting them, machine work, you know, it could take me a 40-hour week to build a saw, friends, if I add up all the hours. And then testing... Why would I put 40 hours into parts that I know aren't going to last? The bearings in these saws, they feel okay, but they aren't marked, friends. There's no maker name on the ones in my saws. They're just 6203. There's no speed rating. They're not C3, um, which is the tolerances. I can't, I don't trust bearings like that, friends, especially ported. You're putting more power and, and more abuse through them and more RPM usually. So right there. I can't port one of these with the stock bearings. I just won't do it because that bearing's gonna fail probably pretty quickly. Now moving on, the part that scares me the most in these is the crankshaft. The cranks are pretty soft in these friends. Um, I have ported saws back in the day with FarberTech cranks that I built. They didn't last very long. The crank stretched. Um, often the crank will stretch and or the bottom of the rod will fail. So, and that's a catastrophic failure. You can wreck cases and top ends and bearing pockets. So, again, friends, if you want to port yours, it may work for you. Um, and it's probably just going to be a toy saw. If you want to try porting, go ahead and port one of these. It may last, it may not. Um, with the kind of power and speed I'm going to add to one of these, I can't take that risk. If I mail him the saw, friends, and it goes to Texas and he runs it for a week and it blows up, then what? He's going to have to spend his time and money boxing the saw, mailing it back. Then it comes back to me. I'm going to have to tear the whole saw down to the bare cases. Probably report it because the cylinder is going to get toast. Again, friends, there's a difference between a work saw and a toy saw. This is still a toy saw. This saw starts, runs, idles. It pulls the bejesus out of a long bar. I'm really happy with this saw. But it's only going to get occasional use with me it will it's not going to get daily use if i mailed this saw to him he would probably wear it out pretty quickly the next thing 
I do not use FarmerTech cylinders and pistons. I used to in the past, but they don't last that long, friends. The coating on them doesn't last long in a professional setting. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But here's the thing, friends. I have like six FarmerTech 288 cylinders here um, that have been donated. Ones that I already had, the one off the saw I tore down. They're all different, friends. Some of them look pretty good. Some of them look pretty ragged inside. Some of them have really thick plating. Some of them, the plating's kind of questionable. Um, I'm sure if I put a timing wheel on all of them, they would all time different. So, again, these kits, they buy parts in batches. They put them in a farmer tech bag, and then they send it off. One crankshaft might be better than another, but I can't put my name and reputation on questionable parts, friends. So, again... If you, these are more of a fun saw if they blow up whatever they're fairly reasonably priced They're not as cheap as they used to be. I'm into this saw for 400 bucks friends For 400 bucks. It's well worth it for me um, The other saw was donated friends. So again, and that comes to the next part People keep saying well, that's that's a high budget saw it is friends that other saw if you bought the kit uh, delivered here where I am, it's 400 bucks. I'm gonna put another $250 worth of parts in that saw. That's 650, and then I'm gonna port it. So, you know, that's gonna be a thousand dollar plus saw when I'm done. But here's the thing, friends. It's I'm just having fun. I want to know, and the only way to know is you know where the rubber meets the road. I'm gonna port that saw and mail it away. Okay, so. Um, if you have one of these and it blows up, grab one of those NWP cranks, a good set of bearings. Maybe try another FarmerTech top end. But again, friends, it depends on how much you use your saws. you got to be honest with yourself. Um, some of my saws I use quite often around the farm here. Um, come, fa come firewood season, you know, fall into winter when I do a lot of my cutting, a lot of those saws get used a lot. But a lot of my builds have sat on a shelf year after year. Um, that 461 that I mailed uh, or that I gave to a bucket to bring to Hogan, um, that saw sat on the shelf a lot. I just didn't run it that much. It's a good, reliable build. It's all OEM with a Meteor piston. That's it. There, every other um, part in that saw was bought from Still. Um, I want to know how, how long is that saw going to last? That's not a super hot build, friends. I went in there and squeaked it a little bit with my grinder, you know, a little zing zing before I put it back together. Well, that saw runs really good. That brings me to another thing, friends. The Iron Horse dropped a video on transfers. Go check it out. I'll probably put a link here. Uh, check out that video. And I found it interesting. He was talking about long, long transfer runners versus blowdown. Well, that's been my experience too, friends. That 461 has about 20 degrees of blowdown, which is short for my typical builds. Um, but again, I didn't want to go long blowdown on that saw because I didn't want to do a bunch of machining. That saw has like 20 degrees, but it has really long transfers that wrap around the front. And uh, while the transfers are open longer, the air is going to flow a little slower up those transfer runners. And there you go. Long blowdown works in that saw. Uh, these typically have really short blowdown, 17 to 20 degrees. If you guys are interested, I want to do another video on the 288. Because again, I'm going to be building that one for Caleb and porting it. These saws have short blowdown. There's a reason why. I know why they have short blowdown. You can correct the blowdown in them if you correct the factory deficiencies, which these have. These saws are not super strong. Um, they're a good low and mid-range saw. They don't scream. Uh, there's a reason for that. They are a short blowdown, small transferred saw. Um, if you guys are interested, I'll shoot another bench video. I'll show you the piston cylinder and approximate timing numbers that I see in these. And we can talk about short blowdown versus long and why these are short blowdown saws. I know why. Um, and I'd like to show you guys why. A lot of you guys are porting and you're getting to the point you want to get to the next level. Well, we're going to start showing you some of the ways you can make these saws faster, stronger. Um, and once we get through that... I may even show you guys some of the special moves I use to keep these saws cooler. Because there are, friends, there's a lot of stuff I do to my saws to keep them lasting longer um, that I don't show on camera often. Typically, it's just time. And, uh, but.
but we can even get into the more uh, in-depth things of how to make a, a saw last. And again, friends, this saw has crazy compression. I'm really happy with this. Um, this is becoming one of my go-to saws. The side cover's starting to get scratched up. Um, I'm using this saw quite often, friends, because I like it. Um, it's becoming a trusted saw in my fleet. It fires up, it tunes, it idles, it oils, and it just goes. I've literally had zero issues with this saw. So, um, if they were all like this, I would say, yeah, these are worth every penny, and you can grab this and make money with it. Um, if you were running a tree service, and you did want to run one of these for $400, it's kind of hard to beat. Actually, I found a deal on these uh, like 365 shipped and they're already assembled. I personally would rather assemble my saws because I think my quality control is probably better than whoever's building these. But again, that's just me, friends. And you can spot faulty parts before you put them in the saw. But anyhow, friends, don't, don't confuse these with an OEM saw. They're not. They're not even close to the quality. Are they fun? Yes. If you want to learn how to build saws, please buy one of these and put it together. You will learn a ton. They're clean. You can build this in the house because there's no oil or gas in them, friends. They're clean. Um, if you don't have an outside workshop in winter and it's not warm, buy one of these and assemble it in your house. They're clean, shiny, and new. But friends, I would not port one of these the way they are. I don't trust the bearings and cranks in these. And for an around the yard saw, cookie cutter, playing once in a while, sure, put a farmer tech cylinder on one of these. But at the end of the day, uh, those cylinders don't last super long in a cutting environment. So to me, I would rather spend the money, put a good quality top end on it, a good crank and good bearings. And that way, I don't got anything to worry about, especially if it's going to a professional. So, and again, friends, you know these rings are soft. The saw only has like three tanks on it. Look at the compression. The, this thing's 100% broken in. Um, these iron rings and these, they seat quickly. Great for getting a saw in and out the door, but they also wear a lot faster. So you got to keep these things in mind. Whereas if you go, if you go a caber ring, those are hard. They take way longer to break in, but they will last way longer than these soft iron rings. So again, friends, it depends on what you're building a saw for. A toy saw is not a work saw, and a work saw is not a hot saw. There's all different kinds of saws out there. And I think a lot of people um, confuse what is what. And, you know, me as a builder, I like to be honest, I build work saws. My saws are not for cutting cookies, and they're not hot saws. There's a lot of guys that build a faster saw than me. Uh, and that's the truth, friends. But I want reliability. I like my saws to start one pull once they've run that day. Uh, three pulls cold is kind of the way I like it. And I like them to pull hard, but I want them to last long. So, um, and maybe run a little bit cooler. Things like that are what I look at. I never build a saw so that I can go up to a giant piece of wood in the yard, friends, uh, cut a really aggressive chain that's only gonna last for three cuts and then show you guys my work. I just don't do that. Um, that's not what I build. There's nothing wrong with that. If that's the kind of cutting you do, that's fine. But friends, I build work saws. This is a toy. This is not a work saw. It's a work saw when I run it, but I would not give this to one of my buddies that runs a tree service or, or a faller. I wouldn't give this to them and be like, oh yeah, it's great. It'll last a long time because that's probably not the truth, friends. Anyhow, uh, I hope I cleared that up. Please buy one of these. If you're learning how to build saws, these can be one of the best ways for you to learn how to build a power saw. And at this point, I like this saw. It runs great and I'm happy with it. It will blow up one day and when it does, we'll see. Uh, we'll go back and look inside of it. Whether it lasts a long time or a short time, I don't know, friends. Uh, this saw could die at any second and that would be par for the course because again, these parts on these saws, the entire saw is of questionable qual quality. Whether it be the flywheel, the ignition, any of that stuff, it could die at any time. So, anyhow friends, that's about all I'm going to say about that. Thanks for watching, take her easy, and I'll see you guys in a couple days. Later.